Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Dawson, and today we are talking about how to do a physical exam on a rabbit. And although this might not be super interesting for people who are not veterinarians or aren't in the veterinary profession, this is a very important topic for veterinarians who are interested in getting into rabbits or learning about rabbit medicine. But it also may be a value to some of you guys who aren't veterinarians and just are really curious about, you know, the veterinary side of rabbits. So today I brought Ollie to be our guinea pig. I don't have my stethoscope, it got left at work. So we're not going to have any B-roll with me and a stethoscope, unfortunately, but that's, that's life. So today we brought Ollie and so he is of course thrilled that we are here. So when I look at a rabbit, there's a few things that I first look at. Uh, and obviously that's the exterior. So we're looking really briefly at hair coat, body condition. So seeing how thin or rough or how fat they are. Um, you should be able to basically just feel the ribs and feel a little bit of a fat pad over the top edge of their ribs. And sometimes they can surprise you. You really have to feel. I um, mean, if there's any mats or anything like that, you can't leave yet. If there's any mats or anything like that, then you have to really be conscious of that and make sure you know that you're actually feeling ribs. And sometimes they're a little squirmy, sometimes they tense up a lot, and that's just the way it is. So typically then I move on to just a general overview of the eyes. Now to do a full ocular exam, it may be necessary if their primary complaint is eye problems. However, any rabbits that don't, there's not really a big reason to go ahead and stain those eyes unless you have a complaint of an eye issue. So next we'll look into his ears. And typically I will recommend using an otoscope um, because you wanna make sure, hey, there aren't any dirty mite filled ears. And two, there's not an ear infection. Uh, those are both very common in rabbits, especially mites in rabbits that are in large colonies or in areas where there's a ton of rabbits or if they have access to outdoor. So they have an artery in the middle of their ear and usually I'll start to feel their pulse um, and see, is it active, is it normal, is it hyper, is it fast, is it slow, is it bounding, is it weak, any of those things, depending on why the rabbit's there. For just a healthy exam, I would expect a normal, normal pulse. Next, I will get out my stethoscope and I will start listening to them. And the things that we wanna to listen to are heart and lungs. Um, that's typical across any physical exam, but then we also want to listen to their GI tract and make sure that we're hearing that gurgling, that we're hearing the GI tract move things along. Uh, and you wanna hear that both sides as well. Just like horses, they are hind gut fermenters and do typically, stop nibbling on me. They are hind gut fermenters and typically they do, you know, ferment things and their GI tract is pretty loud. So with a stethoscope, Give yourself two to three minutes and listen to it and make sure things are moving, especially in a sick rabbit, um, but also in a healthy rabbit, just so you get to know what it sounds like. Typically then we will move on from here and we will start feeling limbs and feeling ribs and just doing an abdominal palpation if they'll let you. So feeling, making sure you can feel their kidneys up here, like just underneath their backbone. Um, and then you'll also want to feel and see, is their liver enlarged? Is there anything weird in their stomach? Uh, sometimes you will feel a hairball in their stomach, especially if they're not being groomed well enough. Um, or it could also just be a really large hay pack. So as long as you know they've been eating and their fecal pellets are normal size, leave it alone. Also take a look at their fecal pellets. If there are any in the cage, anything like that, make sure they're appropriate size for the size of the rabbit. Make sure that there's not a ton of hair or hair chains in their fecal pellets as well. Uh, that's a very important part of their physical exam because it can tell you a lot about their fiber consumption and it can tell you a lot about their grooming state. Also, now that we're, we're kind of down in that area, you'll want to see if you can flip them over on their back and look at their vent. You're okay, bud. And typically you'll wanna do this with your technician or you know with a second person. And all rabbits have what they call crypts and that's an area around their, their rectum, between their rectum and uh, their genitalia that has scent glands. That's completely normal, leave them alone, don't clean them unless they're really filthy. 
Make sure there's not a lot of hair loss or urine staining or scalding around their vent and their rectum, um, anything like that. Some rabbits do fine on their back, usually all he does, but today he's a little bit stressed out. Next, you're want, going to want to look in their mouth if you possibly can. And you wanna start with their front teeth and make sure that their front teeth are aligned appropriately, aren't too long, that they're not digging in somewhere. After that, you want to start looking at their back teeth. And you wanna do that with either an otoscope or there's some speculums that you can use, um, something along those lines to make sure that you don't have points that look like this or that you don't have any dental disease. If you wanna learn more about rabbit dental disease, take a look at this video up here. You also wanna make sure that there's no nasal discharge uh, because this is indicative of either snuffles or pneumonia or just a normal upper respiratory tract infection. If you wanna learn more about snuffles, you can see this video over here. So even before you do a lot of that, you wanna get a good history. You want a really good history. And if you've gone to vet school or if you are a veterinarian, you'll know that history is hugely important in veterinary medicine and in medicine in general. And there's no exception to rabbits, and I would say maybe even more so, because a lot of times, and the majority of their diseases are going to be a result of their husbandry. Not all of them, but a lot of them are going to be a result of their husbandry. Are they being exposed to wild rabbits? Are they being fed an appropriate diet? Are they getting enough fiber? Are they eating too many pellets? Are they eating appropriate pellets? Is their bedding appropriate? Are they in good conditions, etc. Do they have good access to water? Other things that you also maybe want to look at would be the bottoms of their back feet to look for any sign of sore hocks in rabbits as well. That is not super common, but it does happen, especially on metal grating and for larger breed rabbits, they're more prone to it. And I recommend you watch this video here if you want to learn about what I recommend for cage materials and for bedding and all of those things. So a few other things that you guys may wanna do while you're doing a physical exam on your rabbit or on a rabbit is to look and make sure there's not a bunch of dandruff. So something called walking dandruff is pretty common in rabbits and that's the layman's term for it. The technical term for it is chylotiella. And it, again, pretty common, it's, it happens quite frequently. So one of the other things I wanted to mention here in this video is what do I typically recommend for annual things for rabbits? What do I recommend they get every single year? You know, there's not really a lot of vaccines for rabbits, so we don't do a lot of that. They're not very prone to developing rabies and there's not been a lot of cases of that other than in research. So we typically don't vaccinate for rabies. We don't have any other vaccines that are typically given to rabbits. Well, the one thing that I do recommend is doing a deworming at least once a year. And the reason for that is worms are common, worms are present um, between tapeworms in rabbits as well as some of the round and hookworms. Not as many hooks, but definitely roundworms happen in rabbits as well. But tapeworms are probably the most common so making sure that you do something that will help take care of the tapeworms is pretty important. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more veterinary content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you haven't already, if you are subscribed, hitting that little bell will make sure that you're notified as soon as one of my videos goes live. Typically they're going live at eight o'clock in the morning central time yeah, on Tuesdays and on Fridays. And we're trying to keep it as regular as we possibly can. So far, since I've started this whole YouTube journey, I haven't missed an upload. And I do intend to continue that as long as feasibly possible. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. The next video is going to be about how much I make. Am I a high roller or are my pores dirt? We'll find out in the next video. See you guys in the next one.